Ooh, take a look at this. What is this guy wearing? What's he wearing on his legs? Do you know what they're called? Well, in this lesson, I'm going to teach you. Hey, I would love it if you subscribe to my channel right down there for more tips like this on winter clothing. This lesson is about winter clothes. Do you know the names of all the different kinds of, of winter clothing? Well, this is extremely important if you are going to come to Canada for a winter. Or maybe you're planning to move here for the rest of your life and spend every winter in Canada. I hope not. Don't be foolish. <laughs> Don't come to Canada in the winter. The summers are great, but the winters are bitter and harsh. So I hope if you come to Canada, at least you have a little bit of money to take a, a quick vacation somewhere, maybe to Mexico or Hawaii or something. That would be great. Now, this is very important, especially if you are planning to work outside. Okay, so if you're going to have an outdoor job like uh, construction or landscaping, okay, landscaping is stuff like snow removal, um, just taking care of the outside of a property. Okay, that's called landscaping. Um, now, also, if you are planning to take public transit, this is really important. If you need to take the bus to school or work when it's very cold outside, even if the bus stop is really close to your house, right? Maybe it's only a two or three minute walk away from your house, but you know, if you have to walk a few minutes and then wait for the bus in like minus 30 or minus 40 weather, with the wind, I mean, you are going to freeze, even if it's just for a few minutes. Okay, so that's why winter clothes are extremely important if you are planning to spend a winter in Canada. Okay, so these are called long johns. Long johns. You might not have them in your country. Okay, you wear long johns underneath your normal pants, like your jeans or something. Okay, look, I have my long johns right here. <laughs> these are my long johns. I wear these underneath my jeans when I go outside when it's really cold. Okay, so if it's like colder than minus 10, I would say, and you're gonna be outside for, you know, maybe 20 minutes, half an hour or longer, then you really need to get some long johns because your legs are going to freeze. I mean, just your normal pants, like your jeans, they won't protect you from the cold. If it's, if it's colder than minus 10, I would say, it's, I think it's a good idea to invest in a pair of these. They shouldn't be too much, only a few dollars, I think. Now, another name for these is thermal underwear. Thermal underwear. The word thermal means heat. Okay, heat, thermal underwear, just like thermal socks. Have you ever heard of thermal socks? Thermal socks are like a special kind of, of socks that you can buy to keep your feet warm, really nice and warm in the winter. So you might want to buy some thermal socks if you come to Canada. Now another thing you might want to buy is winter boots. Winter boots like this. That's pretty important, uh, especially if you're going to work outside, but also if you're not planning to be outside very much, uh, you should still buy some winter boots and have them in your car in case your car breaks down in the middle of winter. Maybe you're driving outside the city or even if you're inside the city, I mean, you know, sometimes if it's really cold, it can be dangerous, right? Driving in Canada is really dangerous. Um, you know, you might hit a snow drift. Okay, a snow drift is like a pile of snow. Here in the winter, we get blizzards. A blizzard is like blowing snow and the, the wind blows the snow onto the road and it forms piles piles of snow on the road. So, you know, if you suddenly hit a snow drift or if you hit the ditch, 
The ditch is the area beside the road. If you hit the ditch in the winter, I mean, that's just going to be terrible. And it's possible. It's very possible. So you need to have winter boots like this uh, in case that happens. Then at least you can walk somewhere uh, and your feet won't freeze. You know, if you wear normal shoes, you know, like that tall, let's say, and if the snow is like that deep, then the problem is that snow goes into your shoe and that can be really frustrating. Okay, so if you're just walking to the bus stop in the winter and you get snow into your shoe, you know, it melts and then your socks get wet. Your socks get wet. Then the whole day of work or school, you know, your feet are going to be cold and wet. So that's not good. You should, you should invest in a pair of winter boots if you come to Canada. Now, you might want to buy some gloves to keep your hands warm. I mean, unless you want to walk around like this with your hands under your, your armpits or if you want to be doing that every two or three seconds, well, you don't want to do that, right? You should just buy some gloves. They're very cheap, you know, to buy a nice pair of gloves. I don't know, maybe maybe $20 or something like that to get a good pair of gloves. Now, some people like mittens, mittens. Sometimes we call mittens mitts, mitts, a pair of mitts. Now, the problem with mittens is that your fingers don't have individual holes to go into. So, you know, it's sort of like you have one big finger. So it's sometimes it's hard to to grab things with mittens. So personally, I prefer gloves. It's much easier to work when you can move your fingers around like that. Now, you've probably seen me wear earmuffs in some of my outdoor videos. These earmuffs right here, right? I wear them like this because they they keep my ears warm. They sort of they sort of pin my ears to the side of my head, right? Because my ears are pretty big, they stick out pretty far, so that means they get cold. They get really cold very easily. So I need earmuffs to protect them from the wind and the cold, but also to sort of pin them against the sides of my head, right? So you can buy two styles of earmuffs. You can buy this kind, which sort of go over your head, and you can buy this kind, which sort of go around the back of your head like that. It's these, I mean, probably like $2, one or $2 from, I don't know, the dollar store or from Walmart or something. So, you know, just spend a little bit of money um, on winter clothes and it will save you a huge hassle, um, a lot of frustration, a lot of cold. I mean, you might even die. Canada is so cold in the winter that you need to be careful. It's, it's really dangerous, right? Now, you might want to wear a scarf to keep your neck warm, right? That's called a scarf. Now, we have something else called a neck warmer. That is sort of like a scarf, but it's one piece that you put over your head and it just sort of it just sort of sits there on your shoulders and it keeps your neck warm. It's, it's pretty nice, especially if you're working outside. The problem with a scarf is that you have to wrap it around and then, you know, sometimes the scarf comes loose or there's like loose ends right to the scarf. And if you're working a job um, that involves some like machinery, you don't want the you know, the scarf to get suddenly caught in some kind of machinery and <laughs> strangle you, right? That would be bad. So if you, you're getting a job, I don't know what kind of job, maybe a construction job or something, then you should just buy a neck warmer, put it on and just forget about it. Now we also have something called a turtleneck, a turtleneck. That's a sweater with like a high neck piece right? It just, it's designed to keep your neck warm. You know, a lot of heat leaves through the neck. I'm not sure how, you know, how much percentage of heat leaves the body through the neck, but I think it's a very high percentage. 
right? Your neck and your head are very important. So, you know, you need to protect your neck in the winter. You need to get like a sweater, like a with a, a turtleneck piece, um, or you need to get a scarf or like a neck warmer or something to keep your neck really warm. If your neck is exposed to the winter wind when it's like minus 30 or 40, you will really feel, <laughs> you will regret not buying just a simple anything to protect your neck. Okay. Now, you'll probably buy some sweaters when you're here. You know, there's all different kinds of sweaters, different styles. You can buy sweaters with a hood. Those are called hoodies. Um, you know, you can buy like really thick sweaters. You can buy really thin sweaters. You know, you just, just get some sweaters when you come to Canada because you're going to need them. Now, this is probably the most famous piece of winter clothing in Canada. It's called a toque. A toque. This is a Canadian word, toque. You can't say toque in the US or in England or Australia. They won't know what you're talking about. But in Canada, this is called a toque. So you should get a toque just to wear over your head to keep your head and your ears warm. Now, I think this is another Canadian word, parka. Parka. That just means you know, a big winter jacket. A winter jacket right? A winter coat, right? Something to keep you warm in the winter. You know, usually, usually a bigger coat, not, not like a thin little light fall jacket. We're talking about a nice, a, a proper coat, right? That's called a parka here in Canada. I think it's a Canadian word. I could be wrong. Maybe they use it in the U.S. as well, but you definitely need a good winter jacket if you are going to come to Canada. That's probably the most important thing especially if you have a nice hood like that with some fur, you know, then you don't even need a toque. Then you could just wear your parka and like hide under, under the hood, right? Now, if your face gets cold easily, especially if you're working outside or, you know, I don't know, if it's really windy, you know, your face just freezes. So you might need a ski mask, a ski mask. That will protect your face from the cold. You know, you probably don't understand what it's like experiencing minus 40 degrees. Have you ever experienced minus 40 degrees? The minute you walk outside your house, your nose hairs freeze. The first breath you take, your nose hairs freeze instantly and you can feel your skin freezing and your eyeballs freezing. It's scary. It's really bad. I mean, it's so dangerous in the winter here. It's, <laughs> you don't know what it's like because you're probably from a warm country. I don't know, maybe like Mexico, Brazil, uh, India. Um, you know, I know parts of those countries, there are mountains, you know, and maybe, maybe it gets cold, but a lot of people have never experienced minus 30, minus 40 you know, degrees. So you might want to get a ski mask. It's up to you. Now, if you want to protect your eyes from the cold and the, the blowing snow, then you need to get ski goggles. Okay, ski goggles will really help, you know, protect your, your forehead. They almost, they cover a big part of your face, right? Almost like that much. So they sort of protect your forehead a little bit around your eyes. So, you know, you might want to buy some ski goggles, especially if you go skiing in the winter. There's a lot of nice places to go skiing here in Alberta and BC, and also in Eastern Canada, there are some nice places to go skiing as well. So you might want to buy some ski goggles. Hey, so you might want to know where, where do you buy all this kind of clothing in Canada? Which stores should I go to? Well, you know, you can buy winter clothes at lots of stores, but you know, probably the cheapest might be like Walmart or there's a store called Army and Navy. I've bought some, you know, parkas. I think I bought some winter boots there one year. Um, so this, this store, I think it's in some different provinces. It's not a very popular store. It's not a big store, but here in Calgary, there's a location. I think in BC, there are some locations as well. Um, so that's a place to buy some pretty cheap, you know, winter clothes. Um, now you could also look at thrift stores. 
Thrift stores like Value Village. Remember I took you to Value Village in one of my lessons? Thrift, that means like second hand. Okay, so you can often find some really nice second hand parkas or toques or gloves. I mean, it should only be a few dollars for each item. So that might be a good place to look. Now there's another store called Mark's Work Warehouse. This is for, you know, for people who work like labor jobs. A labor job is is a job like construction or landscaping. So if you need some some good boots, like good work boots, um, you know, you should probably go to this store to see what they have. And they probably have some other good winter stuff. But this is more for like people who are working outside. That's, that's the store. A lot of my friends uh, who have worked outside, they go to this store and buy their winter boots and their their jackets and their hats and everything from this store. But hey, I want to know, what is the coldest temperature you've ever experienced in your life? What's the coldest temperature? Personally, I would say about minus 40 is the coldest I've ever experienced. And that's just so cold. It's just so, so cold. I I never want to experience minus 40 weather in my life. But I think a few times... I have experienced minus 40 and uh, it's it's just so, so cold, especially when you have to walk to school or walk to work. I remember one year where I had to walk to college to take some exams, right? It was the end of the semester and I had a final exam and it was minus 39 degrees outside and I walked to college, it was about a 15 minute walk, a 15 minute walk that might not sound like a very long walk, only 15 minutes, but literally when your face is freezing and when your eyes are freezing and you, it's just so cold. I don't know how to explain it to you. I hope you never have to, you never have to experience that kind of weather in your life, but let me know. What's the coldest you've ever experienced? Let me know down there in the comments and I'll see you over in the next episode of Mad English TV. Take care.